Welcome to the Freedom Unchained channel. My name is Garrett. I am here in Tennessee on a trip. That is why these videos are uh, not being posted at the times that I promised, but hopefully they're close. I don't have the best internet here in the mountains. I've got a little cabin near a town where we're helping a gentleman uh, get out of his troubles with the corrupt government system. Um, we just went to court yesterday. That was really interesting. Um, if you guys uh, are interested in actually learning law and actually how the system works, then uh, subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell notification so you can get the most recent videos that I upload. Um, always hit the like button, subscribe, uh, comment in the comment below to help the algorithm and everything else. You know, you know what you gotta do. You gotta share it around and everything like that because uh, we have to get past the um, guards at the gate of Twitter to actually share the truth around here. They don't want us to learn that we're slaves and how to become free men in this world. But that's not really what this movie, this video is about. It's kind of about that because we do in this video talk to Synth from Skycoin about the uh, future of this world and how we become free men. And uh, um, he goes on about talking, like always, about the um, controllers of the world and the corrupt politicians and the corrupt dictators and so on and so forth and like that. And I try to uh, sprinkle in my little positivity of how we can um, become better people together in, as individuals and make micro communities um, and I'm trying to encourage him that his project is the way that we are going to do that because that is my plan at least and um, so in this video we just uh, chat about that a little bit um, he talks about he continues to talk about the social media that he is working on or the reason why he's working on the social media and why he he's focusing on that now and and uh, that's the most important thing to him right now because we have to um, change the minds of people and get rid of the indoctrination get rid of the uh, lies that these uh, politicians and these uh, dictators and so on and so forth are feeding you to enslave you so this is what we talk about um, I hope you guys enjoy it if you guys want to leave me a tip, go ahead and do that in Skycoin. I got a Skycoin address in there, um, as well as other crypto um, addresses. Um, you guys can contact me if you guys want to help me in any other way. Please uh, do so. And I have a whole bunch of contacts, social media, email, so on and so forth. Um, I also got a PayPal account. You know, I'm still stuck in that corrupt um, fiat system. Still, I got, I got, still have a bridge there um, from that system so I can kind of still continue to live because I am in America where uh, we don't actually accept cryptocurrency as much as other countries which is uh, hopefully going to change here shortly um, I push it as much as I can I try to change as many people's minds about cryptocurrency and I talk about Skycoin to everybody that I can I'm trying to change this world like planting as many seeds in people's minds as possible but um, let's just get to it I hope you guys enjoy the video if you do hit the bell or hit the uh, like button, comment, please, please, please comment, um, whatever it is, just a, you can just say a letter, or you suck, well don't say you suck, because then I'll get censored by YouTube, and then I have to go uh, accept it, I do accept all my comments, I don't care if you're a troll in the comment, and you don't like what I'm doing, I'm still gonna allow you to speak, because that's the kind of man I am, unless you're really, really vulgar, and disgusting, and um, so on and so forth, but anyways, let's just get to it, got my Skycoin coffee with my decal, if you guys want to, uh, want me to make some of these. They're not the fanciest thing, but they last pretty long. I've had this more on my coffee cup for over a year now, and it's still holding up pretty well. It's uh, vinyl, so I got one on my phone too. If you guys want one of those, I'll make some more, and then you guys can uh, send me some Skycoin. I'll send it to you in the mail. Just contact me about it. All right, so let's get to it. Yeah. So we need to re-decentralize these, these media apps, these messaging apps. We need to take control of the user data. And my feeling is... My feeling, though, is when, you know, when these people lose control of the media, these oligarchs, um, we're basically hitting, heading into a civil war situation. Yeah. And they know that. And they don't even care. They're actually investing in these companies 
because they know that at any time, they have this cartel controlling the government, the media. They know at any time their access to the public can be cut off, just like Trump's access. So what happened to Trump? So this group right here, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're in power right now, right? Then they're yeah. okay with it. But they know that the little oligarchy group, they could decide, well, we're the new group and these people aren't in our group. So we're going to shut them off and we're going to, they call it closing ranks. So it's like they have 10 people and they decide, oh, us six are the real important people. And those four don't matter anymore. And we're just, Bleh! and you know, they their <laughs> cables are going to get cut. So they're funding. Is that the same, same closing ranks, the same thing when a, a dictator takes over and then he kills all his military guys and like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the people that put them in power, yeah. his, his promoters, the people in the media, yeah. they feel like he gets in power, he cuts all, he gets rid of them because <laughs> they're too powerful. They, they yeah. could threaten him. They could, you know, they put him yeah. in so tomorrow they could put in someone else. Well, so the, uh, all those, these audits are going on and I, I feel like, you know, Trump's talking about his new social media platform that he's doing. I, I feel like as soon as the this information for all these audits come out, he's going to launch his internet platform and then it's like civil war, all you know. It's all, you know, the me other media tech. It's just going to be hell on earth, I think, once that happens. <laughs> he, um, so you have the DOJ threatening to arrest the people doing the Arizona audit. Yeah. And then you have the Arizona government threatening to arrest the DOJ if they enter, if they're for arresting the Arizona audit people. Yeah. So, and so you have like the federal government people coming and trying to arrest the people doing the audit. Then the Arizona people arrest, well, the Arizona government will arrest. Yeah the federal agents then what is biden gonna do send in the national guard to shoot the arizona sheriff's department i don't know like what is he gonna like this is um so so they're gonna i think but i that, feel like that's the plan like trump's waiting for like more information to come out and then he's gonna launch that social media so he has a voice and then uh, maybe they'll just like uh, try to shut the internet down or something like <laughs> i'm not sure but i heard something about trump? like some airport the airport got shut down like they couldn't fly and stuff like a couple days yeah, ago. Yeah, to stop know. the people from coming in and oh. they shut the airport down. <laughs> I just got a little clip of somebody like on a plane like this has never happened before. Like they never like shut down the airport where we no one can take off and land and I was like, I don't know. The, I forget what airport have the it was. National but... Guard like quarantine or, like the <laughs> new COVID the Brazilian strain just out broke and they'll turn the election on it. We need to quarantine yeah. all that. Look so it's gonna be like the but who knows what's coming? So, you, so these people, Trump is he has a lot of money that is tied up, and they could do lawsuits, they could do tax audits, they could they could destroy him, right? So he's um he's just trying to he's going to negotiate like we leave you, we can cause you these problems, and you can cause us these problems, and you leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. And I think he's going to come to a deal with these people. I don't think Trump is actually going to go down the path of civil war and free mm -hmm. America and bring back the constitution. And, and remember he got in power and he's talking like Clinton for prison and we're going to mm -hmm. do this. And, and then as soon as he gets in, he just leaves Clinton alone and he doesn't really cause, because Clinton could cause him trouble and he yeah. can cause Clinton trouble, but they just decide not to bother each other. So Trump isn't the one that's going to, to do that. He's an, you know, he's an insider. He's friends with these people he's known them for 30 years even gates he's friends with gates you know and he and uh he's uh he's not i don't think that and you know kushner and these people like they look like to me people that are just especially like kushner just trying to make money they're yeah. just trying to like gab he said yeah trump will create an account on gab but you got to censor this stuff <laughs> and you have to give us 10% of Gab or 25% of the Gab as the company so we make money on it and he'll mm -hmm. create an account, right? And, you know, is that someone that's fighting for America or is that someone that's just trying to make a quick buck out of this yeah. bullshit, right? Yeah. So I, I think Trump did... He, he made people aware of how corrupt the system is, you know, yeah. it is because it's in their face now. Uh -huh. But he's not going to be the one that brings this system down yeah. uh he's just but they saw what trump did is he went right to the public with twitter mm -hmm. and he knows that the next person who want who can do that so they're trying to close off the media and cut off all routes for the politi politicians leadership whatever 
to go direct to the public. They need everything to go through these media corporations. Mm -hmm. And if they don't go through the media corporations, they say it's like Nazi, Nazism, it's like Hitler, it's like, and they do not want the public going direct. You know, they, you know, Mao, in, uh, in China, Mao went directly to the public. He didn't go to these managers, he didn't go to the media, he didn't go to the newspaper. He went directly to the public. And, um, and that's what they're scared of. You know, they're mm -hmm. scared of um, losing the media, controlling the narrative and controlling everything in the middle and setting the agenda and the topics. And that's their, that's their main power. And so there's this despotism and COVID track, you know, all this crap that they're doing. And, and, um, and it looks like they're in power and that they're, you know, and it looks like a totalitarian Nazi regime and that they're going to crush the opposition and send the FBI in and that they completely control the narrative and that they can do whatever they want and that, you know, the public is obedient sheep and they can be brainwashed to believe up is down, left is right. And there's no lie that's so big that they won't believe it, right? And that they can get them to eat insects and drink toilet <laughs> water, right? They believe, like, if you look at it on the surface, it's just like, give up. We control everything. We own everything. You have no power. Um, you know, we're, everyone believes our brainwashing. No, you know, you're, and we can label you domestic terrorists. And they're, and, but the reality is that this facade hides weak, it hides weakness. It actually, the, their system, their power is completely illusionary. Like when they, they tried a bunch of this bullshit and, and they tried like, oh, we have a hurricane, you gotta evacuate. And, and, and they did all this shit in the media and they only could get like 0.4% of the public to give a shit or to pay attention to the media or to get off their ass or even care. Like they, they were, they're constantly testing, like what can we get the public to do? And they have to, and the COVID thing, they have to tell them like, you're going to die. And here's these corpses and look at the Indian, you know, and the, like India and the, and the morgues are full and there's so many bodies. They can't burn the bodies. Yeah. They're, they're bringing in refrigerated trucks. Yeah. Refrigerated <laughs> trucks. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the halls, the halls are lined with dead people. <laughs> and they can still only get 20% compliance, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and this is after shutting down all opposition and censoring Twitter and without any, and so even if 4% of the population goes to some other platform that doesn't have all this bullshit, they've completely lost. They've completely lost. So uh, we're in a pre-revolutionary war situation right now where these oligarchs, these billionaire oligarchs, they're funding alternative social media and Web 3.0 because they realize that they're going to have to have a fight for political power. And this fight isn't going to be – right now they control CNN. They control the narrative. Everything goes to their channels. But when it doesn't and when a political leader can go directly to the public like Mao did or, or Trump did, they have to produce their own political leader because this other guy is going to produce the political leader and say they're bad and then you know purge their media assets. And uh -huh. if you look, uh, Alex Jones had a larger circulation than CNN. Yeah, he was controlling the narrative, so they have to shut him down. And Trump had a larger circulation than CNN, uh -huh. and so they they have these assets, and they ban. They basically told Facebook, "You're going to promote our assets, our CNN, this and this and this." And, and, and ban all the blogs. And they told Reddit, same thing. And they, to, and, and they shut down all the alternatives and vote and whatever. And then these other people, they just started a website. Like you had Gateway, uh, you know, Washington Beltway, Gateway. I forget what that web, that political news site Gateway Pundit. And you, yeah, yeah, the Gateway Pundit. And you could just, anyone can create a website now. It costs $200. And they can't shut them. They can block them from Google. They can do this. And then they just go to Telegram. They blocked them from Twitter. Everyone moved to Telegram. Yeah. So we're going to see a migration of about 400 million to 1 billion people to these new social media platforms, these decentralized social media platforms in the next two years. Yeah. So the billionaire class, these oligarchs, they're like, well, either we're going to own those Web 3.0 platforms and make money on it, or we're going to lose, you know. And so the old money... The, the old, 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 old money, like the sixth generation money, they controlled local newspaper and the Miami Post and the New York Times, and they're just irrelevant. They, they, they've lost all their, their, their they, like the New York Times just controlled the whole narrative for the nation. And they're looking at these new tech oligarchs, Zuckerberg, the Twitter people. Bezos. That, and like you have, 
yeah, Bezos and Larry Page, Sergey Brin, so Google, Facebook, Amazon, Twitter control the global media. And these old money people, they're like, well, we own the Miami Post, we own the New York Times, we controlled this country for the last 150 years, 100 years, 80 years. And they said, we don't have narrative control anymore. And so they want to get rid of, so this is really old money people. They want to get rid of the, the new money upstart and like Zuckerberg's, you know, because you basically have to go to Zuckerberg, get on your knees and suck his dick. He's like a gang lord. He's like, he controls the elections. He, he's running the DNC. He, he's running the, the he's, if you want to be uh, paying for, elected. Paying, paying for ballot drop boxes and. <laughs> $500 million for ballot drop boxes. And he's paying for Sharpies to validate the <laughs> Sharpie drops. And he's, uh, where did, if he put half a billion dollars, who got that money? into a nonprofit? Is that being paid out to bribes? Is it, how do you dump half a billion dollars into a nonprofit? That's rigging an election. You know, like, yeah. he's not even, a, he doesn't live in that state. How can he go into like Tennessee and dump half a billion dollars into, into Pennsylvania elections, right? Yeah. If, if some Saudi, if some Saudi billionaire, if the King of Saudi, like King Fahd of Saudi Arabia went into Tennessee and dumped half a billion dollars on an election nonprofit, you, what is he getting for that money, right? Yeah. This, so this is like Clinton Foundation bullshit. It's like uh, a bunch of – it's just crazy. So um, I don't even – where did the money go? Where, who, who got that half a billion, a billion? Is it bribes? Is it – paint me? like did they spend it on ballot drop boxes? Right. Where, where, where did that money go? They spent, right? uh, spent on uh, printing ballots in China and shipping them over. <laughs> <laughs> 10 billion ballots, 10 billion people voted for Biden. 10 billion. <laughs> Give me one so, second. I'm a, let, me let, let me let this cat in real quick before I get a cat bite. Go to the bathroom. Jay, come here. Come here now. Hey, come on. Ooh. All right. So, so you have like you have the Mercer family, right? You have this Renaissance technology, you have this giant hedge fund, right? You yeah. have these billionaires, and they're getting involved in politics, and they're they're funding Trump, and they're funding like Cambridge Analytica, they're funding Bannon. They created their own social media website. What was that? What was that thing called? The one that they shut the Amazon shut down. Um, there was uh, two ones. There was par Gab par and then Parler. The Parlor, yeah, yeah. So they spent a they parlor, they they bought got a bunch of like GPUs doing like deep learning. They have like five thousand GPUs and they're crunching a hundred gigabytes a second of user posts to say is it spam, is it bad, is it pro Trump, is it pro that, is it whatever, and they're to filter out comments and 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 they and they're building this media empire, right? And then um, these other billionaires are like, we can't allow them to have control of the media. We need to control the media. So they have Amazon and all these web services shut down Parler because these billionaires want to monopolize control of the media. And we can't let the Mercers have access to the media because having your own media outlet is access to the public. So these billionaires decide we need to shut down all the other billionaires so we can control the narrative. We don't want competing narratives because then people won't believe our bullshit. So... They go into Mercer's and they tax audit them. They harass them. They shut down their Amazon. They threaten them with, with election interference. They, they say that uh, the Mercer's are being funded by the Russians and the Mercer family billionaires are actually bots working for Putin. And they're like, oh, throwing all the shit at them in their media, right? So you, all you have is a bunch of billionaire oligarchs squabbling and, and fighting each other yep. about who gets to control the stupid masses. Yeah. And, and, and this is, I'm sick of this. It's like, do you want warlord Mercer or do you want warlord Zuckerberg or who do you, who do you want to be brainwashing you? Right. Yeah, I'm sick and, of uh, or you want the Cokes or you want the, right. So we need to just, I, I'm just sick of this shit. Like you want communist party brainwash uh, propaganda? Or you want Russia propaganda? Or you want the Koch propaganda? Or do you you want uh, ADL propaganda? You want well, who do you want? Who's propaganda do you want? The you know? one the one thing they kind of you know fucked up with the COVID thing is that uh, a lot of people are taking their kids out of their indoctrination camps and homeschooling them. So <laughs> so maybe that'll help out us help us out a little bit. So, so this, this situation is very – you're going to see the end of civil society in the United States. 
it's you're going to have these billionaires. They're going to create their own media outlets. They're going to go directly to the public and they're going to put in El Presidente. And then El Presidente is going to ban the other social media outlets not owned by the oligarch who put the president. In. This is what the, and this, this sounds crazy, but this is what they're going to do. This is what happened in the Philippines is they have this guy come in and then the billionaire family that puts the president in, I think it's Marco's family, buys their social media outlet and then um, bans, starts trying to ban the U.S. social media outlet because they want their social media outlet to, to be successful. They merge in all the smaller social media companies into theirs and give them, a, they have like a part of a huge check and they uh, buy up the company. If they can't buy them out, they'll harass them with this law or that law or judges or whatever they have to do, right? And, uh, and then what will happen is eventually that president, that family that owns that country will issue a central bank digital currency. They'll have some new digital thing. And then the president will be sitting there with his little blockchain controlling who and which guy in the media gets the money and what yeah. company gets pumped and who gets the loans. And, there, and there's these banks or international banks. They're not owned by the, the you, one person cannot own all these merchant banks, right? Like there's not one guy that owns all the banks in Germany. It's a bunch of old money families, uh, country club, you know, old, really old school. Um, you know, this guy, like, like um, George S George, the third, uh, Esquire senior, right? Like this guy's father's father, father, blah, 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 you know, and, and then he, he became a VP at the bank. His, you know, his father has a friend who owns a bank and he worked at this bank. And then um, his son got an, uh, you know, a VP position at his golf buddies bank. And then his son is going to be like, uh, you know, run, this is like, you know, you, you, you look at some of these people and it's a really, it's like, a, it's a really closed club that you're almost, you know, that you're born into. It's not a, um, and then there's some new upstarts and, there, and there's some stuff, but it's like, you know, the newer banks are like BCII and they're like doing, how do they enter the banking market? Well, we're the bank that does all the weapons. We'll, we'll do, we'll take money from people selling missiles and, and, and weapons and drug and drug lords. And we do the business. The other banks won't, won't do. Right. So, and so you have these new bank upstarts and it's like BCII. And then you have these really old money, like Brooke family standard charter. And we were incorporated in 1452, you know, and we've been around 500 years. <laughs> Like you look at the look at like Standard Charter and when they were incorporated, or you go like the HSBC was like the Sassoon family in the Chinese Opium War, British East Indies Company, founded in seventeen you know fifty two or some shit. You, you you they go back like four hundred years, right? Yeah. And so, and so you have these banks um, and their subsidiaries, and and, and um, they control the loans, the money, the uh, they control a lot of the economy. Secretly, mm. you know, a, a lot of the power is in like which company can get loans, uh, who can who can buy real estate, which company can expand, who you know who who gets screwed or doesn't get screwed. Um, well, so these people, they the, also in the, control in the media. In the quantum financial system thing, they say, "Oh, if they uh, if they're compliant, we'll allow them to participate in our system." <laughs> <laughs> so these old money families, they want to maintain their power, right? That they've had for generations, and it's it's understandable. And the old money sees the new money as a threat. So, like, if you're this Baruch family and your bank was chartered, and I shouldn't look this up. I'm making up some number, but it's probably the 14th century. Let me let me actually. Um, how old is Standard Charter? Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hope it's like. Uh, let me. Let me check this. For it. Um, the Standard Charter. How old? Let's see. All right. Well, you, you always get 50. off. You always get off topic. So um, I did. Oh, 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 wait, wait. wait. All right, okay, wait, so, wait. So, let me just. So mm -hmm. if you want to bring it back, um, well, um, are you guys doing the DeFi? Uh, exchange are you guys working on exchange yet or okay but wait, I, want, I want to finish my, yeah. my bank rant so, so you have, since old money like baruch's and the lubes and the you know and the rockefellers are new money they've only been power for three generations and they own chase manhattan and and then you, you have like the sassoons and, and rothschilds and hsbc and you're really real old money right yeah. 
And then, um, and then other families you haven't heard of, and, and then you have all these weird banks in Lugana and, and all these like weird European, like ultra wealthy people, names you've never even heard of, right? Yeah. And these weird little countries you've never heard of and like Liechtenstein and, <laughs> and some people. And, uh, and then you, and, and then, and so anyway, so there's these banks and these, these people and they're, and they're looking at this blockchain technology and they're saying, what's going to happen to us? To our business that we've had in our family for 500 years, 200 yeah. years, 100 years, right? And they're seeing that. Let's look at the Philippines as an example. El Presidente comes in. You have some family like the Marcos family. They come in. They put in this guy as their guy. And they fund the social media and this and that. They take over the media for the whole country. And what happens in that, and, and then they start banning U.S. social media so, to stop these foreign oligarchs from getting media control. Mm. So they firmly consolidate power in this country. They have El Presidente declare, oh, if that guy's a drug dealer, you can just kill him. And the police put on ski masks, and they go throughout the country at night with their ski mask, and they just start executing people mm. that they think might be selling drugs. And they execute a few thousand drug dealers. All right? Why did they do that? Because their political opposition in that country was involved in the drug trade. So they mm -hmm. can't let them fund the political opposition in that country using money that was derived from that country. So they, they also start cutting off like airlines. They start cutting off the money to their opposition and consolidating the power, right? Yeah. What is El Presidente? What's El Presidente's blockchain strategy, right? You know what his blockchain strategy is? There's these banks and they're owned by these people overseas and El Presidente's sponsors are not necessarily, they're at war with those people. So El Presidente is going to announce a new digital currency strategy. And it's basically being, being that the federal government is going to issue a currency. And they're going to issue it directly on blockchain, directly to the people. They're going to, right? And, and that means El Presidente and the family that put him in is going to control which, which media outlet, who gets the loans, what bank gets money. And these little banks, these Brooks and the, you know, Sassoon's and the HSBC and the, you know, they, these people, these middle banks are going to, why do we need them? Because I can have my money on blockchain. I don't need to put my money in HSBC yeah. anymore. I can have my money right on blockchain. So I can have my, an account at the federal bank. Why do I need this the HSBC and these local banks? And so they're not going to, so their power base in terms of control of the media and control of money is going to be gone. And they're going to have this, dict and they like term limits because if some guy, like if Putin can only be in for eight years, mm -hmm. Then eight years later, they have another election and they can use their money to make sure another president gets in that's not Putin. So they always, they can, even if they're not in power now, they could always have another chance at it eight years later. Yeah. But if the country doesn't have term limits and they don't, they don't control the media and their money doesn't help them, how are they going to control the political situation? So we're going into this. So, they, so these people, they realize it's over. The system that we've had since the end of World War II is over. And the system we've had for the last 400 years is over. And a new yeah. system's coming in. So their, their solution is, so they have two choices, which is either they just become irrelevant, which is what's going to happen, or they're the ones that fund the new system. And they, they're the ones that use this new technology to seize power. Mm -hmm. So this, this quantum blockchain and what the BIS is talking about and this idea that they're just going to keep going along in the same direction that they've been going for the last 200 years. And they're somehow going to hijack this technology and use it to turn into a system of slavery and keep the old mm -hmm. school in power. I think that's very unrealistic. Yeah, it's a delusion. And it's a delusion. So the billionaires, like, so these old money people, they don't like the Zuckerbergs. They don't like the Bezos. They don't like the Musks. They don't like this, these new money oligarchs that are now in a controlling access to the public. So they're trying to figure out how to get rid of the old money, the new money. And so there's, there's a sort of fight going on here to get, for the old people to retain power. And these new people, they're not culture culture they're sort of like you it's like a book's like a gang lord he's like a, you go and you you prostate yourself in front of of uh of don zuckenberg and if he supports your election campaign you're gonna win mm -hmm. and and then he sits there and he's like oh so what have you done for me this week you know like mm -hmm. what are you <laughs> right he's controlling <laughs> and, and the same with um that guy at google the, the, the Google realize that they're either going to get involved in politics or they're going to be regulated into oblivion. Yeah. So, the, so Google 
Eric Smith went in and integrated Google with the DNC. He yeah. went in and, and Google is running the DNC, Google and Zuckerberg. So, and this is like, uh, they realize that they don't get a seat at the table, that these people are going to tear them apart. They, they can't remain politically neutral anymore. It's impossible. So they decided to take over the political establishment. And so, um, so you have a merger of the state and government power, which is like one type of fascism. That's one type of fascism is these companies integrate with the political system and become the political parties. And there's another type of fascism, the alternative, which is El Presidente and his family owning the media and the, the central mm -hmm. bank. So in Southeast Asia, they're going to start losing control over these countries, over the media in these countries, over the president. And there's going to be a group and they're going to cut off everyone else and take seize very firm power in that country. It's going to be like an oligarch. It's going to be like a monarchy almost. Like a Marcos family is going to rule the Philippines, right? And if you're friends with them and you're doing business with them, they're going to be buddy-buddy and you're going to make a lot of money. And if you fight with them, they're just going to purge you. It's going to be like Putin in Russia. You know, all the business has to go through Putin. If Putin's your friend, you're, you're under the roof you're under the crescia right yeah. putin will protect you putin will, will make sure your business does well but if you're fighting with putin he's just gonna swap you like a fly <laughs> right yep so they don't like that but that's the you know so that's the reality and what's happening with bannon is they have these billion uh bannon was funded by these billionaires and the mercer family they sent him to europe and he and give him some money and he buys out a monastery and he's creating like an alt-right jedi academy so if you're a billionaire, if you're one of these families and you want political influence, you go to Ben and you give him money and he'll create this fake whore, alt-right dictator puppet. And, and they'll tell him like, Here, you, you, you're our guy. You do what we say. And you, you say this, you say this, the public will love it. Our algorithms say, you say this and this and this, and you're going to win. And, and we have these media assets and you're going to win this election. And you're our guy. And once you get in power, you're going to do this and this and this. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to put in El Presidentes across Europe. And, um, and if you want to be political, you know, political access, you want to, you want to protect your assets in those countries, right? You're going to need your guy in the government. You're going to need to have your little El Presidente. And so the, so the whole world, to me, it looks like it's heading in this direction and blockchain social media is an alternative to El Presidente social media or um, DNC fascist government, mm -hmm. you know, Zuckerberg social media. And, and it's, uh, it's in the middle. It's a, new, it's a neutral social media. And this, this world, so this world we're going into, I don't say this is a utopia. To me, this looks like civil war. This, this looks like I, I see this whole process happening yeah. over the next 10 or 20 years. And, um, and I think it's at the point now, if we release social, if we just say, here's the software, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, that's inevitable at this point. It's something, you know, are they going to harass me? Are they going to bother us? Are they, it's going to happen. If we don't do it, this, I, I have 40 projects that I'm looking at right now that I'm tracking that are trying to do this. And if we don't do it or we get harassed, someone else is going to do it four years later. So, so this is an inevitable aspect of history that people are just going to have to have to accept i don't see so these bis people they're delusional they're this they, wef they sit there and have, we're going to have this system and we're going to be in power and and we're going to be able to cut all the other oligarchs out of power we're going to stop them for, and we're going to create this sdr and we're going to keep all these countries in debt and we're going to have this basket of currency and everyone's going to be paying us tribute and we're going to be able to print of a hundred trillion dollars a year and put it in our pocket and it's going to be great and everyone's going to be paying interest to us Mm. on the whole earth and, and and we're gonna make rules and people are just gonna obey us for no reason and and we're gonna own everything and uh and our companies don't have to be profitable anymore the, our mm -hmm. our central bank at the imf will just print up money and give it to us for free so we can be inclusive and have sustainable capital and sustainable capitalism and we're gonna build this green utopia where we're where we print up trillions of dollars and put it in our pocket yeah. And it's going to be a it, like, and ever, and you don't need to, you peasants don't need to own anything. You'll be eating insects, and you don't need to own anything. And everything, will, we'll just give you a check every month so you don't riot, and uh, and and we'll, everyone will love it, right? And this is like, this is going to fail. It's yeah. like the 
they're going to try a great reset. It's going to fail. They're going to try this shit. It's going to fail. They're going to, I've been watching these people for a while and 90, at least 80 to 90% of the things they try to do fail. Yeah. They try, they try, they try, it fails, it fails, it fails. Some of the stuff they've been pushing for 30 years now and it has not gone anywhere. And um, so whatever, the, so, so these billionaires are trying to, st- so we have a system and it, it's dynamic. People rise, dynasties rise, they fall, emp- empires expand, and then they collapse. And this is a cycle. And they, they, they de- when the Soviet Union collapsed, they declared the end of history. They said it's the end of history. <laughs> this, is, this is it. This is next million years is ours. <laughs> Nothing's going to change for a million years, right? And it, it's like our thousand year Reich is upon us. And it's like, um, it's a lie. So, so this idea that, that this cycle, that, that history is going to stop, conflict's going to stop, is absurd. But, but it's completely absurd. So where I see blockchain, um, this is just a shit storm. It, it's, it, there's no, it's just like, it's a civil war. And all of these people, they're going to have to grab their own media platforms. And they're going to realize this pretty quick. They're going to have mm-hmm. to build their own media platforms. If they don't have access to Web 3.0 technology, they're going to have to get it. And if they don't have an El Presidente dictator ready to take over a country, someone else will have a dictator to take over the country and will lock them out of the media and the banking system in that country. And they're going to lose their assets in that country. If they don't do it first, someone else is going to do it first. So this is, a, this is an arms race in terms of media technology and manipulation technology, deep learning technology, in terms of, um, it, it's no, I don't think it's any more about, let's, we've had power 400 years, let's keep it another 400, where how do we keep power another 100 years, right? Mm. This is an arms race where we're gonna change the system now and we're gonna get power for us so we can lock the other oligarchs out. And if we don't do it first, someone else is gonna come in and eat, eat the cake before us. So, so this is this is why you see this shitstorm. This is this is why you're seeing this crap in the media, and the and also the biggest another factor is the people that ran the world since the end of World War II. They're all like 80 years, 100 years, 115 years old. They're retiring or dying, and their children are, are complete fuck ups. Uh, yeah. they're, they're like degenerate, drug addicted. <laughs> uh, they're screw ups. They're just not able intellectually yeah. to basically run the system that their parents built so they're it's like the uh, the old mob like they were you know like in the control and their children the next generation are all drug addicts and shitheads and yeah. <laughs> clown, you know, like insane clown pot like just yeah. like a clown joining the insane clown pot so you start a gang yeah. like do yeah. math well that's so like this is like the one reason why i want to do uh, the con- the contract where we can empower like people to contract with each other, so like we can just like you know ignore these government people and just like work you know independently and like you know that's kind of my vision and goal is you know if we can get everybody to have their own blockchain, we they can contract with each other, have their own reputation between you know com- small communities, we can micro community everything. We don't need these big oligarchs and like their power will just be like useless and. Yeah, that's kind of my I vision. wish it was going to be like that, but I think it's going to be like a gang warlord shows up and he mm. says, I'm, I, you know, and that he, the law is, what is the law? It's like you make a threat and you say, do this or I'm going to hurt you. Do this mm-hmm. or I'm going to find you. Do this or I'm going to break your legs. So yeah. when you have the government fall apart, what happens is gang lords show up and this guy says, he, and he could be a good gang lord. He could be fair. He could uh, mediate. He can get rid of the riffraff. He could say like, no one sells meth on my territory or only I sell meth or you only sell meth to those people yeah. or whatever, you know. But what you're looking at is a political system like Mexico or Russia, like the Americans are going to have to get used to living under a system that more, looks more like the Russian system of all these like local gang lords than, than it is a system of rule of law. And may, hopefully maybe someone elects a sheriff and he can, he can be a badass asshole and he, maybe the sher- that guy and his little gang can drive out the other gangs. So yeah. maybe you, you could have like a constitutionalist, like libertarian um, gang lord with his little sheriffs right like well, my, shooting my, up the other gangs <laughs> well, my, my, yeah. my thinking is, is like the, the, 
the people the people individually like kind of have the power and like if we can empower the individual to uh you know be community watch kind of thing and like instead of you know like if we could do a phone app where like you call the police and then, like your few of your neighbors come and they're kind of like not part of the gang they're kind of like um accountable for themselves and not you know and the cops you know then the cop is more accountable to the you know the public kind of thing then we won't have you know get rid of these like companies and so you know i make everything more individual if we can make more things individual then we won't have these like uh we're, you know we have these boss and the warlords and stuff like that i don't know if it'll work so but we might as well at least try to work that way so we can, you know <laughs> so pretend you have your police right you pay local property taxes and the police yeah. come in and and they're accountable to you you elect the sheriff you you know if you don't like the mayor he can the mayor can have the police arrest the federal government agents he can he can have yeah. they can do whatever they want they just the judge says this and they do it and the judge can just make up shit and if the public supports them what are they going to do right mm -hmm. so the, the sheriff could just evict all i don't like these people evict them blah 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 so so they can really make up their they have the ability to make up their own rules so the federal government they want to federalize the police and, and they can't do that mm -hmm. you can't go into local community in la and say like we're gonna you're not federal deputies and, the, and and washington's now taking over the houston police department they're trying to do that they're trying to get them hooked on the government money and the funding mm -hmm. so what they did was they funded uh uh police are racist defund yeah. the police so you take out the police and then suddenly uh, all these people start killing people and no one's there to arrest them. Uh, yeah. you, you steal, you shoot, you slash your neighbor's tires, you kill your neighbor, no one's going to stop you, right? Yeah. And then if you're a company or you're a rich person, you end up paying this private company that comes in and they're going to protect you for money. Mm -hmm. And that company is going to be regulated by the federal government. It's going to be a, a publicly traded company like Black, like uh, Blackwater, or one of these mercenary groups in Afghanistan fighting the war in Afghanistan. Is going to they're going to come home from Afghanistan after shooting a bunch of goat farmers, and then they're going to you know in the head with sniper rifles and grenading people's sheep and things like that. And they're going to now be your local friendly local police officers that you have, you have to pay their $150,000 a year uh -huh. salary so that they can yeah. go on roid rage. And well, like, so my thought, of, my thought is like, you just Uberize everything. Like you Uberize police. And then, um, uh, like if we can decentralize the court system, like that's why I, I'm studying common law, like, and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, because like the government doesn't have the power. Like everybody thinks, thinks they do it's like yeah. a court system is just a man brings a claim and then uh you know you get then you get uh you kind of battle not battle out but you kind of like decided the facts between the two pe the two parties and then mm -hmm. when you can't decide on a fact then you go to the jury and they kind of decide on the facts so if we can like try to decentralize all this stuff and have an open open record instead of like the government controlling the record of the court and then you can you can uh, uberize the police and then everybody kind of accountable for themselves when they actually go and show up for something and you can have like the people that are more military uh trained and uh, you like if i i can only i can pick like the cer certain like uh skill levels that i want to show up or and so on and so, i don't know but it's just a it's a we, it's we a, have it's to a do that. evaluation of an uh, idea that I think we can get away from this gov government, but still have a government, a governance system and still have roads built and security and all these things that people are like, how can you have that without your government doing it for you? It's like, because, yeah. because uh, when businesses work together, you have small communities that work together, they're going to want a road, build a road to fucking get people to go to their store to buy fucking, you know, the things that they need and yeah. stuff like that. It's like, you need community policing, you need community legal systems. So you can't let the federal government and these Fortune 500 take that over. So some areas, they're going to be ruled by gangs. Yeah. Some areas are going to be ruled by the community. And some areas are going to be have private security, Black Rock, Blackwater, running the police department. And that's it's going to be a mixture. Mm -hmm. If you look at the if you look at the judges in Mexico, they, they just uh, the the drug cartel comes and they said, you're going to do this. And they'll take a police officer and say, we're going to take one police officer every day to this street and we're going to execute them on the street every day until you do this. And they do it. They just pull out a police officer, drag them over there, execute them every day. Another one, boom, boom, boom. A judge, if they don't, if they go against the cartel, they just shoot the judge. And you're seeing that in America. You're seeing like, remember that lawsuit against, um, there's a lawsuit against a bank 
and some gang member just shows up to the judge's house and unloads a gun and executes his son and and you know yeah. Maxwell you had you know the Maxwell lawsuit and the, and she says that you know you got to keep these records sealed because we don't want that to happen over here look at what happened <laughs> to that judge over there you we don't want that to happen over here you know and so you have like intelligence agencies gangs private mercenary groups corporation and and, and these people are for hire they're, these gangs the the drug cartels are for hire and people in Mexico they drove out the drug cartels they get their guns they drove them out of yeah. their town the federal government came in and disarmed the public so that the gangs could move back in because the federal government was controlled by the gangs. The president yeah, was funded by the drug cartels. There's a uh, one town in Mexico that actually kicked the politicians and the police out. They have like this, uh, this, um, checkpoint where if you have like a political sign in your car or, you know, you, a pol you support the police and stuff, they like get the hell out of here. And they're like, they're so peaceful. Like, and they just have like this uh, assembly of, of higher, you know, and then every every like certain um, time period, they just automatically replace them with it's no, there's no voting that you just, you know, now it's your turn. Now you go in and like, like, I forget <laughs> what, I forget what town it is, but it, it's like amazing. You just, they just kicked all the politicians, and all the police out and like, they are living peaceful. <laughs> so, so if you're in an area that's homogenous, like if everyone has the same values, you can do that. But if you're in a multicultural area mm -hmm. with all these different groups, you're going to have the Somali gangs and the Syrian gangs yeah. and the, the, the black gangs and the black Hebronite gangs fighting the black gangs and the black gangs fighting the hispanics and the in a in, in um in la there was an this area this is hispanic gang territory and this is uh you know black gang territory and the hispanic gangs would come in and they would exterminate the black gangs they just come in and they'd ethnically cleanse the, the, the neighborhood and the real estate developers wanted this because the, the, there was lower crime in the area controlled by the Hispanic gangs. So they would have, they would buy up all the real estate. Then they would pay like these gang members to come in and just cleanse the, like clean out this area. And so that they could do redevelopment. And this is, um, um, you know, I, I'm like, what do I say? What do I say about that? And, and in Mexico, you know, it's like, uh, um, you know, it's like the Somali gangs are going to come in and clear out the Syrian gangs, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is this is like, uh, um, not everyone is a nice person. Not everyone is nonviolent. Mo most people are like they're in the little ethnic group, and yeah. they're in this. Uh, they're ready to kill and cleanse the earth of the other, of the other people. And, um, and that's just the reality. So yeah. this civil notion of civil society we have in America where everyone's an American and we all share the same values and we live yeah. under the constitution that is gone. We're, we're living yeah. like America is just like a bunch of African tribes murdering What's and the, enslaving each other. You it know? goes back to the social media and, and the, uh, you know, the manipulation of our minds is that they put us, they have to put us in all these boxes. So then we start wars with each other and like, you know. Because you're not my color, or you're not my, in in my group, then I have I have the right, you know, I I feel morally right that I can go out and kill you or something like that. It's like we, you know, if we can start taking back the get get rid of these politicians and shit like that, then I think we'll all be better off. I don't. So so the social media, I feel like I I did this at the beginning to liberate people, right? To liberate them, and it's beyond like uh, right now I'm I'm. Um, disillusioned i know that like you're gonna have 10 or 15 percent of the population they're gonna they're gonna be smart they're gonna use their brain they're gonna understand what's happening mm -hmm. and they're gonna figure it out and then they're gonna take action and the minority is gonna take action most people are just gonna sit on their ass they're gonna go off the clips like lemmings they're gonna have their assets wiped out they're not gonna they're gonna be completely screwed they're not yeah. going to make it through this, and most and uh, and well, maybe eighty percent of the population most of that's going to be in the, in the in the cities. Is you know it's a, in the a cities, lot. Yeah. A lot of that's going to be cities, and the rural areas is like where the people are going to go run to, so they can you know get away from all of this bullshit. I want to start a whole blockchain uh, town if I could, like fund it and like go buy some land and like <laughs> you have to get chickens and you have to produce your own food and you need your own well, I mean, well, I mean it, checkpoints it, it, and you need a local yeah, defense community exactly. and you need your own factory manufacturing communication your own social media mm -hmm. you have to just tell be able to like lock the checkpoint 
point. Tell them to fuck <laughs> off. I don't, you don't, I don't know if you need You're going to have close it. communities. I don't know if you need you're gonna that. Have a, you're going to have a intense, gate. But <laughs> and it's going to say, you don't belong yeah. here. The gate's not going to open. They try to get the car, and it's like, sorry, yeah, you exactly. don't belong here. Yep. You know, you don't. It, we're talking, the rich people, they're building closed communities. And yeah, they're going to exactly. have face scanners, and they're going to have license plate scanner. Oh, your license R- plate doesn't RFDI matter. You, you don't belong here. Yeah, they have robots like mall police, and they're just gonna push up on the people and like, sorry, sir, you don't belong here. Sorry, sir, please leave. You don't belong here. And it's a fucking then the robot, like the little fucking robot poster is gonna start tasing them, or it's just gonna start like emitting gas or like stink bomb the people and like, sorry, sir, you don't belong. You know, they have <laughs> robots harassing homeless people on benches. So the, the rich people, they're gonna have the little private community with their own little private airport for the little drone aircraft, and they're gonna have these little like police rent a mall rent a cop things like fucking tasing the homeless to get you know they're not even gonna they're not going to be able to enter this private enclave and it's gonna have their own supermarket and their own dock for the stuff to come in and out and yep. th- they're they're building their own society independent of and and this is what the people with money are doing and the the, the poor pe- the people that are not stupid that are intelligent the middle class they're going to have to do that. They're going to have to get their own CNC machines, their own pick and place machines, their own soldering irons, their own communication system, social media, local community defense force. Uh, they're going to have to have their own system of governance, their own food production, gonna their own be, water source. It's going to be and secured, if they don't, secured by blockchain is, is what it's going to have to be too. <laughs> and I, I sort of feel if you like, I, I have to be realistic about that. They're not, that's, that's, if you're not doing that, you're going to not be able to retire, to have a good life, to raise your children, to, if you're not running your school, running your water supply, your food supply, someone else is doing it for you. Yeah. Like if you, so, um, the middle class, um, so yeah, if anybody wants to come together and, uh, start a blockchain town and <laughs> do our own security and, uh. And they're going to try to contract with each other. Then we'll be, (laughs) yeah, I know. Like, what if the federal government wacos these people? Yep. You know. Well, that's what I think. I think we'll be better off because you know, back in Waco, there, when you have cameras everywhere, you know, you can you can show the world that you're a peaceful society, and then you have the freaking FBI coming in, and then it's not going to be a pretty sight for them. So, like, that's why you can just you know have more uh, social, you know, like uh, record everything and. You know, make a you like a YouTube town, a town of creators and a town of. Uh, <laughs> uh. So I, I don't really. So I think the direction, you know, the direction, it just makes me feel sick. I, I see mm-hmm. like I see them building concentration camps in the UK. Right. And what and for COVID-22, what, what am I supposed to say about that? You know, put bar- barbed wire. This is where we're going to lock these people up. Like um, they seem to be going into this fascist nazi totalitarian federal control like um you know the the people running this system they look like satanic like no one no one can really look at what they're doing and not say that this is that these countries aren't being run by a satanic death cult yeah like i look at the headlines and it's yeah except for the people that have no morals and then they only get their morals from the government so then they're like well, the government did it. You know, it's all right. They killed everybody. It's fine, man. The government did it. They're reducing the <laughs> CO2. They reduced the CO2. It's like, yeah. um, so, so I, so for block, so I, so I thought I was, we're going to liberate everyone. We're going to build this libertarian utopia. And then I realized that realistically, we're, you know, it's, this is going to be the start of the civil war, the breakup of these monolithic federal structures of the, you know, this is, this is happening as the NATO, as these Western countries basically disintegrate. We're, we're entering a, a period of political instability mm-hmm. and a period of, de- of decentralization, devolution, uh, you know, uh, rights going back to local communities, going back to gangs, going back to like autonomous communities. We're not going back. We're not going into this, you know, utopia, libertarian utopia, where we're gonna, you know, ha- we're gonna have a very weak federal government, and we're gonna have yeah. states. And um, well, I think I think that is a li- libertarian utopia is when we're we're going back to small communities and 
you know, I think we can get, I think we can keep the gangs out of it. I think we can be more peaceful if we, we, we keep our, our, our focus on this and, you know, use the blockchain and, and use, you know, it's a, it's just a tool and, uh, you know, the evil people are either going to use it or we're going to use it. So we might as well just use it. And, you know, if they burn everything down, then we'll just, we'll just build something up in the, with the, in the ashes. And, uh, so I'm just trying to stay positive with it one way or the other. You know, we're gonna. I'm either gonna die or I'm gonna be successful with uh, helping the world get better, one way or the other. So, uh, do you think that the communities in the like in the South and basically the small communities outside of New York and LA and San Francisco, you think that the people are strong, and they have shared values, and that they're able to that they're not stupid, and that they're able to to see what their interests are. I think, and, yeah, uh, I, I think if we can, lives. yeah, I think if we can show them a different way and like not like make them understand why we why we don't need a huge government to oversee us or like there's no reason for to vote for things like like I I like the idea of blockchain like you know how dash dash does like the little little like uh, treasury voting kind of thing I love those mm-hmm. ideas how you can just take instead of like having these huge corporations you just have micro communities where you get to vote and then you're kind of like supporting that you're supporting that idea and then if you don't want to support that idea you just move on to another you know another thing to support that and if that idea is not good it just you know shrivels up and dies and i that's why i mm. love the blockchain idea is that you can just move mm. from one and take your value from this one area and move it into another mm. thing and and i think that's why i i believe we're going to be successful in this Mm. Uh, you you know utopia not utopia but libertarian idea or anarchist or whatever however you want to say it or just be free and and Mm. if just if people start studying law more the power we have with understanding the common law and that there's the difference between the corporation that they've controlled and and like umbrellaed everything and made us think that that's the court system and we actually just start taking back and we can take back the court system as men and not and get rid of these corporations and i think i think we'll, we'll be better off and, and we'll be they successful did a study on they call them the sovereign citizens and they had like 60 million or 150 million people and it was almost half of the u.s population or one third and they're freaking out about this and they don't talk about them in the meat like they don't the government is scared of these grassroots social movements and they don't let people know how big they are. Yeah. They don't know how many people support them. And so it's actually like, if you have the yellow jacket protests in France and 40 million people protesting and it's all across Europe and Iceland and even spreading to like Egypt and it's going on in 50 countries, they don't want people to know that there's 500 million people or 200 million people protesting or a million people show up to a protest against masks and they just ignore it and they gaslight it and they don't even want to know people to understand how many people support uh how much support there is for these groups or who the leadership is and and they're they're hidden so as soon as you have these uh yeah that's my difficulty this- is they hide everything from me but i know i'm talk. i start to talk to people in these groups and then then people start talking about like the, the law and like i'm like wow you actually understand the fucking law, dude. I'm like, we need to communicate and chat. Like, you want to have a conversation here? I need to post it up online so people actually know this this stuff's going on. And you know, so I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. The, the whole methodology is you have companies like Palatier and they siphon all the social media data and they make a graph and they get all the groups. And their objective is to take the biggest group and get them fighting, divide them, infiltrate, put in a pedophile like drug addict sodomite as a leader. So there's this guy and he has nothing to do with the group. <laughs> And they'll promote him and say, he's the leader of that group. And then yeah. all the people start following him because he's promoted on Twitter. And the real ideological leadership's over here. And they know this guy's like a pedophile, scammer, sodomite, drug addict, and that he's going to self-destruct and that this group is going to implode. But that's who they want to promote on Twitter because that's what's going to end up destroying the group. And they're producing mm-hmm. mathematical models for how do we control these social movements and yeah. how do we control the... I actually have a book, another book. So there's this one book, Surveillance Valley, and that one's really good. And then there was another book by the this military guy. He did how do you have much, software. How do you have all this time reading books and programming things? And <laughs> Oh, I wish I... I used to read like one book a day. Really? This is um. Yeah, are I don't you have so um? Much time are anymore. you autistic? Definitely, definitely, hundred fifty percent. I figure. Or like super, like very high functional oh autistic. <laughs> Where's 
I can't find it. Um, there's another book called Interlock. And there was this artist. He's like graphing all these relationships with like BCII and the Clintons. And he did a bunch of paintings and he made it like into an artwork, like the network. And these graphs are actually what Palatier, what Peter Thiel's company um, does. And, and the reason that these guys are elevated, like Peter Thiel's invited to Bilderberg now and he's invited to the DNC and whatever. And he gets a New Zealand passport is because for the government, if you're a political party, they can make a graph of all your supporters, your geographic area, why they support you, their narratives, who your enemies are, what the leadership communication structure of your enemies are, and then and then automatically gives you strategies of like if you take out these four guys, their whole network's going to deconstruct. So Jeez. this is like a new form of network warfare, like yeah. Rand Corporation called it network central warfare. And these oligarchs and governments and corporations are making these huge network graphs to see all these social movements, how big they are, who the leadership is, what they're saying, and then to use these as weapons. And the public right now really doesn't can't even see what's going on in the world. But, but these people have a bird's eye view of the whole world and, and basically everything that's going on. But then the public doesn't have $2 million you know, a month to pay Palatier to get these graphs and stuff and, and these tools. So eventually these tools are going to be um, like you could just see like who are the people fighting us and then you see it's like all these people and you just stop voting for them unfollow them you know they, they support it you know you see it's a network of bullshitters mm -hmm. and even and most of the people today that are promoted uh, as leaders like Sheen, Sheen Hannity and this guy and this guy and they're <laughs> really um, they're just there to say a little like limited hangouts they'll say this and say that but really stay away from this and they just have to, they have to give the public their leaders mm -hmm. so that they follow them. And you can't have, and if they don't give the public their leaders, they'll find them on their own. So the social media is really about promoting mm -hmm. synthetic whores and promoting um, these, like before they had Alex Jones and, and then they ban him and then they'll promote like Scene Hannity or something. And he'll have his like little CIA badge when he's on TV and he'll you know, promote this fake pseudo alex jones on fox news that that we control and we'll create like the pseudo celebrity and um and so people really don't have authentic leadership they their narratives are completely controlled like it's impossible today to get even find media even alternative media where the narratives are not completely controlled by like this group or that group and um people are just um I, I don't see if this if this goes on in our two generations, there's no future for humanity. Mm -hmm. These people, they're all going to be dead. Like, um, yeah. I, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, all right, that is the end of that video. It was pretty interesting. I uh, listened to it last night once again, a few times to kind of cut out a few spots and to kind of get an idea so I can do an intro for you guys to redo the intro from uh, the. One intro that I did uh, multiple videos the other day before I left town on um, my trip here. Um, so I figured this would be a better one when I actually kind of remembered and uh, clipped it up and gave you guys an idea of um, what we were talking about. I uh, am realizing that I use like a lot, like like that, like you know, you know what I mean, you know, you know. I use that too, you know. So that's good to have my recordings to re-watch re so I can become a better speaker and produce better videos. Um, you guys can go in the comments and tell me how I need to improve or ways to improve things. I always need uh, const constructive criticism and so on and so forth. Um, I'm okay with you guys telling me how bad I am or how to do different things. I won't take offense to it. I'm an open man. Um, I'm a positive man. I take positivity to heart for everything. Even if it's negative, I can turn it into positive. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And the next video will come out. I believe I'm going to post it on Sunday. And um, until next time, like always, I'm going to leave you guys in love and light and the one infinite creator. Peace.